Blair Walnuts is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting people on this platform. There's really something for everybody on this channel. From how to get a sugar daddy, relationship advice, fashion hauls, and celebrity diet challenges, some may call it chaos, but others may call it some solid creative range. I, for one, find her pretty funny and entertaining, mainly because I'm never really sure if she's trolling all of us or if it's just really who she is. I guess we will never know. But anyway, she is no stranger to my channel here on Abby's Kitchen. My first review of her content in 2020 featured what appeared to be a solid sense of food freedom. So I guess I was a bit disappointed a year later when she posted a now deleted video packed with disorderly weight loss advice. Trigger warning to what I'm about to say here, but the video really read a bit like a pro Anna Reddit thread circa 2005 with a bunch of tips on how to suppress your appetite and eat less. Now, I know that Blair has been through her own journey, including a breakup with her then fiance, so I'm sure it's all not been easy for her to navigate. And after the whole deleted diet video fiasco, she actually agreed to appear on my channel to unpack it before ultimately changing her mind. But since then, Blair has had some time to let the dust settle a bit and it seems that she's ready to finally talk and I of course am here to help you unpack it together. Hey everyone I'm Abby Sharp welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be catching up with Blair Walnuts and her September video, Blair Walnuts Weight Loss NED. And you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning. We will be discussing eating disorders. So as always, please feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you are not already subscribed here, guys, help a girl out here. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen, and also hit the little bell thing so that you never miss out on a video. All right, kids, let's take a look. What's this? Blair Walnuts Weight Loss. Blair Walnuts ED. Blair Walnuts has an... Oh. That's me. I used to try out celebrity lifestyles. Not only their fitness routines, the foods they ate, things got a little out of control. As a fellow content creator, I think a lot of people don't realize that we're humans too. And when we're dealing with normal human life challenges like a breakup or mental health struggle, it can be very hard to like put on a happy face and perform. It's not easy for anyone to kind of like live their life in the public eye, but especially when they're going through something that's particularly hard and taxing. I've really stopped following strict what I eat in a days and diet and fitness routines that don't really align with my lifestyle. I think I'll do them occasionally as like a trend for a day, but I don't think I would implement them in my life because my brain gets a little confused. I think this is a really good call. Personally, I don't really get the whole like 30 day challenges or when creators try to follow a potentially disorderly or nonsensical diet to a T just for the sake of following a video concept. When you're purposefully ignoring your own body cues to like emulate someone else's perfectly, of course it's gonna confuse the body. And that's why you'll notice that when I do these kind of like eat like a celebrity videos, I literally build on the celebrities alleged meals to turn them into hunger crushing combos that work specifically for me. If something doesn't align with my body's needs or desires, I don't do it. Like I don't even attempt it period, the end. That's all, folks. The point for me is to really show people real world examples of the types of balanced meal suggestions that I've always made in my videos. Not to reinforce like a disorderly or restrictive celebrity diet and put my own body through hell in the process. Right now I'm just eating what feels good to my body and intuitively there's no strict calorie counting or anything like that. Okay, so it sounds like Blair is getting back to basics by focusing on the foods that she likes and feel good to her. We love to see it. I honestly just eat what I feel like eating and right now my obsession is avocado toast. I think it's a really great source of carbs and fat and protein and um, if you add a little bit of hummus in here, I think there would be even more protein today. Um, but usually this is what I eat and I eat until I'm full. Love this. And she's totally right. Like this is a great hunger crushing combo. And since Blair used sourdough bread, we actually have a decent amount of protein here. So about 16 to 18 grams. And if we were to add in that hummus that Blair mentioned or a couple poached eggs or hemp parts, or we 
mashed in some white beans or cottage cheese in with the avocado, we could bump that protein up even more. I watch a lot of Abby Sharp. Aww. I love the impromptu shout out. Mm, I'm blushing. I made a video about how to lose weight quickly, which I didn't really put in the most forethought in, which I think was my greatest mistake. I was not doing my greatest when I made that video. It was something that was like often requested on my channel, like, how do I get abs like this? How did you lose weight like this? And I kind of just echoed information that I had from a bunch of like competing sources. Like I had a lot of model friends that gave me advice. I read a bunch of things on the internet. Okay, so I first wanna say that again, creators are human and we all make mistakes. With the volume of content that we're putting out there, like ultimately we're just bound to slip up sometimes. And I think the important thing is to recognize when you're wrong or you misspoke and take action. Whether it's removing the video like she did or re-uploading it with some more context. I've done both of these things here on my own channel when I realized that I might have slipped up. It's also worth pointing out that considering Blair is saying that she wasn't in the best place when she made the video in the first place, we also don't really know if the weight loss was completely intentional or as a result of stress from life events. Often when we're in an uncontrollable circumstance, we look at all the possible ways that we can maintain some semblance of control. And often food is one of the easiest parts of our life to try to manipulate. And this can become a real problem when any resulting weight loss becomes reinforced by praise or external validation as it seems like was the case from some of her fans. I guess if you saw me in America, you've always thought I was like normal size, but for like Europeans, I was like on the bigger side. Like when I went to South Korea, a lot of the clothes wouldn't even really fit me. So like I was XXXL there. It kind of caused this like cognitive dissonance in my brain where I didn't realize if I was big or small and I didn't really understand how to eat well because every single culture and every person has their own different standard of eating. <sighs> Gosh, I mean, I can totally imagine that this just added fuel to the fire here. And these variations in body standards and body ideals around the world is strongly influenced by cultural and socioeconomic differences, and also has a tendency to change from generation to generation. Not surprisingly, unattainable cultural body standards often is directly correlated with the prevalence of dieting and disordered eating, with one study in Eastern Europe specifically suggesting that that the internalization of sociocultural standards of beauty increased the risk of eating disorders in Polish teens. And whether your culture celebrates waif thin bodies or curvy girls with booties, bottom line is that all bodies are going to be unique. Everyone in that specific culture cannot possibly naturally have that preferred body. So the combination of external praise for weight loss plus conflicting cultural beauty standards is definitely a recipe for a tumultuous relationship with body and food. So I really do empathize with Blair here, and we do wanna normalize that even folks with the healthiest relationships with food and their body can also have very challenging body image days as well. At the end of the day, my point still remains the same as it used to be when I was an old walnut, and that's eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. Eat what your body craves and don't eat things you don't feel like eating. Intuitive eating often gets reduced down to the hunger fullness diet when a healthy relationship with food is far more nuanced than this. But I think what Blair is trying to get at here is that we really shouldn't be depriving ourselves of basic nourishment and satisfaction from food for the sake of achieving some unrealistic body aesthetic. We shouldn't be looking at what other people are eating and trying to emulate that so that we can live like them or look like them. Because otherwise, it can be very easy to lose sight of what feels good to our own body and to our mind as well. Always full, but from the wrong thing, so I'd always have a craving for something else later. Today, I have a conspiracy theory that your body tells you kind of like what you need to eat. So this is what I often call the satisfaction hunt. Basically, you try to eat around a craving by replacing it with like a low calorie or diet friendly alternative. And even if you're physically full, the lack of emotional satisfaction ends up sending you on a hunt 
until you just kind of like give in and eat what you truly crave. In the end, you often end up eating far more calories than had you just honored your craving in the first place. And don't forget, the body is incredibly wise and is always communicating with us. So for example, a lot of us maybe have like an intense craving for vegetables after having like an indulgent vacation. That likely is your body telling you that it needs some extra hydration and maybe some fiber after eating a lot of fried food and booze. Do you ever crave something sweet on your period? Maybe that's your body telling you that it could use a little extra hit of serotonin. Do you ever crave a smoothie or fresh fruit during a really hot day? That could be your body communicating that it needs some extra water. The more you tune in, the more you can begin to understand your body's unique cues and signals. And as you start to listen and respond, you can slowly start to rebuild and strengthen that body trust. And today I just so happened to be craving a pistachio latte and a chicken rice veggie bowl from one of my favorite cafes. Okay, this looks like a really beautiful lunch to enjoy in the Miami heat. We're getting lots of energizing carbs from the rice and satiating protein from the chicken, and also some colorful veggie add-ins like caramelized onions, pineapple, carrot, and arugula, which also will boost the micronutrient and fiber content. And of course, I'm loving the avocado for an extra dose of healthy fats and fiber. Looks awesome. But I feel like this is a pretty well-rounded meal. Like, what could you possibly not like about it? Love this Lazy Girl meal. I also think that this is a good example of leaning on frozen processed foods for convenience and ease without sacrificing nutrition. We are getting in our carbs, protein, fiber, and calories, and we're still getting our veggie fix. In fact, some frozen vegetables are often higher in nutritional value than fresh veggies because they are flash frozen at the peak of freshness and perfection. So there's absolutely no shame in the frozen veggie game. Hey, that runs. For dessert, I really like these veggies made great chocolate muffins because they have zucchini in them because I really don't eat enough vegetables. Normally, I usually just have the chicken nuggets and french fries and then I had a yogurt. So if you struggle to get your veggies in, throwing them into soups, smoothies, sauces, and baked goods is an easy way to bump up your intake. And while we don't exactly know how much zucchini and carrots we are getting from these little muffins, they are listed as the first two ingredients in the ingredient list. So basically this tells us that they represent greater amounts compared to the other ingredients listed on the label. So we're getting some protein and fiber from the muffins and some more protein and fat from the yogurt. So looks like an awesome hunger crushing combo to me. Since I've been less stressed about it, I actually have maintained the same weight that I was and some days I have abs, some days I don't. There's like specific foods that make me more bloated. Like if I eat a lot of beans, my abs completely go away. Can we please normalize bloat and body weight fluctuations? I mean, I've seen way too many influencers spiral from minor upticks on the scale and bloating. This is a reminder that it is totally normal for our stomachs to expand after a meal. It is also normal to experience modest weight gain in response to our menstrual cycles, stress, medication, bathroom habits, the food we eat, etc. There is so much to gain when we stop obsessing over food and our body weight and normal fluctuations that are really not meant to be hyper-controlled. It is also normal for us not to have a six pack since most menstruating folk need around 26 to 28% body fat for hormonal regulation to support menstruation and fertility. And then also you have to keep in mind when you're looking at Instagram photos and models and things like that, they prepare for these photo shoots just like a bikini competitor prepares for the challenge. So just because they look like this at one moment in time doesn't mean they always look like this. Amen. Please take everything that you see online with a grain of salt. Thanks to filters and Facetune, social media makes it incredibly easy to curate an unrealistic image that really does not represent real life. And it's no surprise that increased social media use has been associated with low self-esteem, negative body image, and an increased prevalence of disordered eating. Comparison is truly the thief of joy. And I think that we can all attest to that after like a long IG scroll sesh. So this is just a reminder to practice good social media hygiene as a form of self-care because being exposed to unrealistic body standards on a regular basis can turn toxic real 
fucking quick. Don't take this as inspiration. I wouldn't follow random YouTubers what I eat in a day. I would like look at what I eat in a days and diet videos as kind of inspo for new foods you haven't tried before or like a combination of like flavors that you haven't tried. I love this. I mean, I feel like Blair maybe has been watching my content because I say this all the time. I watch a lot of Abby Sharp. That is a core message that I try to communicate every single time I do a review. I know that given the strange parasocial relationships that we develop with our favorite content creators, that it can be very hard not to want to emulate their diet and fitness regimens, especially if you admire how they look. And again, content creators are human too. We all make mistakes, but we also have an enormous responsibility for what we put out there and we cannot underestimate its impact or influence. So I really respect that Blair was able to take that responsibility, discuss it openly, and share her own journey to securing a healthier relationship with food. And on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, please be sure to give it the thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.